Rangers against St Marina and the full live commentary there comes from Stephen Thompson and Alison Lamont. Thanks very much Richard, good afternoon to you all and welcome to Ibrox as Rangers look to once again reduce Celtic's lead at the top of the table to eight points while St Mirren search for a first victory here since the 23rd of November 1991 when a Kevin McGowan goal earned them all three points. Since then they've lost on 21 of their 23 visits to Ibrox. These runs have to come to an end someday. Can Stephen Robinson's side make it today? They may have taken heart from a poor Rangers performance here against Aris Limassol on Thursday night in the 1-1 Europa League draw. And they'll know that if they can frustrate the home team, the crowd can also become frustrated here. Imperative, you'd imagine, then, that Rangers start well. St Mirren already to go with Mark O'Hara, their captain in the centre of the park alongside his Rangers counterpart James Tavernier and the match referee this afternoon who is Matthew McDermott as the Rangers captain takes off his tracksuit top and uh, the ball is thrown to Cyril Dessers who looks like he'll be the man to get us underway with Rangers going from right to left as we look at it from the main stand gantry they are in there Blue tops as usual at home, white shorts, black and red socks. St Mirren in the black and white stripe, black shorts, white socks. And Rangers still unbeaten under Philippe Clement. Kick us off. And Stephen and I were here on Thursday evening where they really didn't start the game well and uh, barely got going all night. Can they get back to something approaching their best form certainly have been better by and large under Clemont than they were latterly under Michael Beale but it's just dipped slightly the performance of Aberdeen wasn't a terrible one but the result wasn't what they were looking for they get back to winning ways or can St Mirren put another uh, spoke in their title charge as uh, Tavernier brings it forward down the right hand side and finds McCausland who got that leveller on Thursday night and certainly made a difference coming on after 35 minutes for Todd Cantwell to a uh, shower of booze certainly but uh, Cantwell's back in the the team and uh, he is playing a more central area it does look like um, Ryan Flynn Fred, is yeah, occupying that, that. Uh, right, right wing back role that we were debating earlier Stephen so yeah, that will be a test in. for him yeah he slots into the back five and it will be a five today I imagine St Byrne, uh, will be trying their best to kind of negate Rangers' threat. They have got a lot of threat today across their front line. Certainly, Seema's pace on the left-hand side is going to be something Flynn's going to need to deal with. Because on the other side, and of course, Lawrence and uh, Cantwell playing as kind of two eights or tens, if you like. Yeah, Lawrence just playing a bit deeper than we've normally seen him almost alongside uh, Lindstrom at the moment, but you would expect him to get forward a fair amount yeah. over the course of the game. Yeah, I would. I mean, I'd be surprised if that's how it uh, remained with the kind of two setters and Campbell the only ten it might well be the way that he plays but it's certainly not where Lawrence wants to be uh, Junga winning the long ball through the middle ahead of Balligan but uh, that's going to go safely through to Jack Butler in a couple of minutes on the clock uh, rather uneventful start to the game Tavernier comes forward down the right hand side tries a little back heel to McCausland which doesn't come off and Kilty can bring it forward Force it Mirren, but McCausland goes backtracking there and uh, wins it back and gets it back to his goalkeeper. And that was one thing we noticed uh, the other night about Ross McCausland. Not only is he a, a good winger, but he works back hard. Here's Seema coming forward, left hand side. He was always stretching to try and get the shot away, and he couldn't trouble Zach Hemming in the St Mirren goal. Safely behind for a goal kick to the visitors. Two and a half minutes on the clock. Rangers nil, St Mirren nil. It's something that St Mirren are going to need to watch. Obviously, I highlighted Seema's pace. It was a ball over the top of the back three. Flint was slightly higher and he was left in a foot race. Gogic did well to put him under pressure. It was just his last couple of strides were very, very long and he hadn't shortened the stride pattern to be able to get the shot away comfortably and was really stretching and put it a good three metres past the post. Goal kick then taken by Zach Kaming. Started all St Mirren's games. Just one clean sheet in his last five, though. He'll be looking to 
improve upon that this afternoon, but uh, the recent records here at Ibrox in terms of losing goals is not great. There was a 5-2 and a 4-0 defeat at Ibrox last season for Stephen Robinson's men as Cantwell uh, looks to put pressure on that Sitmarin back line, but there's uh, a foul on Cantwell over on the far side. It's a free kick to Rangers about 20 yards or so away from the goal line, a few yards in from the right touch line. It was uh, Taylor who was dispossessed there. Yeah, very soft for me, Phil. Um, but it's a great opportunity for Rangers early in the game to flash this in. I'd imagine it would be Barisic with the in-swinger right on top of the penalty spot. Yeah, just a couple of yards in, as I say, from that right touch line. Both Tavernier and Barisic are over it, both perfectly capable of uh, good deliveries. Which of the fullbacks will it be as Rangers uh, put a number of bodies in and around the edge of the penalty area, looking to get the early breakthrough here? And it comes, it is Barisic, the in swinger. I think Seema got his head to it, but it was a St Mirren head also in there as Matthew McDermott, the referee, points for a first Rangers corner of the afternoon. I had to say, I didn't think it came up. Seema will get a wee look here, we do have a monitor today. Yeah, it did, it was Seema that put it behind, so the wrong decision from the referee and the linesman, but a chance again for uh, Tavenier this time to put the ball into the box. Yeah, right hand side out, swinger, and it's a header again. It's Seema who got up. Well, Dessers was also in there at the near post, but uh, comfortable take for, for him in yeah. the end. It was a good ball, but I don't think uh, he managed to get any pace or purchase on the header, and that isn't going to trouble Zach Henning. It was a bit like a couple of Danilo's headers the other night, connected with his shoulder rather than the head, and uh, the same was true of Dessers there at the near post. 0-0 then, as uh, St Mirren tried to come forward, Goldson restored after a, a Europa League ban alongside Balogun, who's not in the European squad, and they've given themselves a lot to do going into that final European match day in the group stage, travelling to Seville uh, next week. A week on Thursday, the game, and uh, it might be that they need to win out there to progress in the competition. They are, however, guaranteed European football of some shape or form after Christmas, as Lundström switches play out to the right-hand side, but it's uh, headed down before Tavernier can get there and St Mirren come forward. Uh, Kilty was taken out off the ball, but Ayunga's done well against Balogun. He's into the penalty. It's a good recovery challenge from Balogun. He had to get that spot on as he slid in from behind. And uh, behind for a St Mirren corner. Excellent play from Ayunga. Received the ball in the half turn, probably a good 40 yards from goal. Turned and drove into the space. Balogun with a very timely tackle. He's just about to pull the trigger was Ayunga, but... A chance for St Mirren to test Rangers early on with a corner kick. Boyd Munts over on the left-hand side to deliver this corner. St Mirren looking to quieten the, the Rangers crowd in these early stages with a, an opening goal just as Aris did on Thursday. And it comes from the left-hand side. It is the outswinger. It's Balogun who gets his head to it. Comes to the edge of the penalty area, but St Mirren can make... Uh, nothing of it, but it is held back in. Barisic has got to be careful here. He was just caught wrong side there, but he does manage to get his head to it, and Rangers work it clear. Decent start to the game, though, from St Mirren, but McCausland has uh, pinched the ball on the halfway line, but uh, St Mirren working hard to win it back, and then Taylor all the way back to Zach Hemming. Seven minutes in, no goals at Ibrox as Hemming launches it upfield. It's over McMenamin and Barisic. Straight out for a throw to Rangers, quickly taken by the Croatian fullback. Rangers' unbeaten run actually began with a 3 0 victory at uh, the Smyza Stadium. That was uh, Stephen Davis's second game in charge. McCausland, who's in possession now, came on in that game and he's played every league game since then. A look, a foul by Tavernier inadvertently clipping uh, Taylor there just inside the St Mirren penalty it will be a St Mirren free kick we've played seven and a half minutes here it's Rangers nil St Mirren nil largely uneventful just corner kicks really to report so far yeah Tavenier a definite foul on Richard Taylor it was good work on the right hand side from McCausland Tavenier with the overlap slipped him in Taylor got across to cover and uh, Tavenier clipped him to, to the ground Free kick then to be taken by Zach Hemming just to the left of his penalty area. Clad all in uh, lime green today, the uh, goalkeeper. Which was turned forward by 
Tavernier, Dessers looking to get on to. He hasn't played in the last couple at all, Cyril Dessers, but he has got three goals in his last four league games. As, uh, Danilo has uh, demoted to the bench this afternoon. Rangers have it at the back. It's square from Goldson to Balogun and then back once more with Goldson on to Lundstrom out to the right-hand side to Tavernier. Lundstrom has it on the halfway line. Cantwell moves away from him and it's back with Balogun just inside his own half. And then Lundstrom picks up once more. So Mirren just getting back into a shape to try and frustrate Rangers. Tavernier with a poor first touch, but his attempted cross is then cut out and not behind for a, another Rangers corner, right-hand side, as the ninth minute comes and goes. And the uh, Rangers will try again from this right flank to provide the opening goal. Tavernier will deliver. Goldson and Balogun make their way into the penalty area to add to the threat of Sima and Dessers. It's uh, cut back the way, though, to Cantwell on the angle of the box and back to Tavernier. It wasn't a great pass. Tavernier's done well. Dinks it to the back post, but there's no Rangers player there. Sima was closest to it, but couldn't latch on to it. Tamely behind for a goal kick. Rangers nil, St Mirren nil. Yeah, they changed it up a wee bit there. Rangers tried the short corner. Uh, Tavernier to uh, Cantwell, back to Tavernier. He got the break of the ball, just tried to clip it or flick it up to the back post, but everybody had remained central. Nobody at the back post to take it. It wasn't the worst idea from Tavernier, but no Rangers player had gone round the back. Rangers unbeaten in 10, won seven and drawn three, and nine of those have come under Philippe Clement. As I mentioned, the win over St Mirren was under Stephen Davis. Clément has uh, won six and drawn three of his opening nine games. Unbeaten in six in the league, winning five and drawing one since the defeat by Aberdeen. Here's McCausland right-hand side. Can't get the better of Tanza. McCausland still working hard, though, to keep it in play. Taylor manages to hack it clear. Falls to Lawrence. Ayunga coming back to put him under pressure he gets the pass off to Goldson just in the halfway line, Lawrence has it back once more plays it short to Lundstrom Lundstrom out to the right hand side to Cantwell, Cantwell forward to Tavernier midway inside the seven and half now low ball into Dessers, Dessers gets turned, trying to get away from Gogic gets help there from Tanzer who is backtracking and he knocks out a play in the far side, it will be a Rangers throw in about 15 yards from the corner flag quickly taken by McCausland back to Cantwell Cantwell touches it back to Lawrence, Lawrence back out to Tavernier right hand side, time to get the cross in near post ball, Dessers flicks it on at the near post but it's uh, off target from Dessers, good move from Rangers, probably their best of the game so far but no goal comes from it, nil nil. Yeah it was, Lawrence out to Tavernier, he puts a sensational ball into the near post, Dessers gets there ahead of Gogic, it's a difficult one it's quite high up and he's kind of past the front post to try and get any direction on it to trouble Zach Hemming but probably Rangers' best opening of the game in the opening 12 minutes. Hemming with the goal kick then. A reminder that we've got Willie Miller watching events at Easter Road. Willie, any, anything doing in the early stages there? Oh, enough a lot of nice football, which I was hoping for. Very little uh, goal mouth action. One big chance for uh, Hibs, though, early in the game. Fish played the long ball. Uh, down the side of Rubicic, he got caught watching the ball and Martin Boyle was in, it was a really tight angle uh, for him, Roos did well just covering that near post, he drove it towards the goalkeeper and he saved it other than that, Aberdeen are playing the ball through the midfield, it is a game where both teams want to get it down and want to pass it, but not too much goal mouth action, still 0-0 Likewise here, Willie, thanks for the update. He'll keep us abreast of anything that happens to St Mirren. Get the ball into the Rangers penalty. A good header away, though, by Balligan. St Mirren have won it back. It's back with Gogic on the halfway line, the deepest outfield St Mirren player. Now it's Fraser, right-hand side, comes away from Sima, forward to Ayunga, who tries to spin away from Balligan. Out it comes to Flynn on the right-hand side for St Mirren of the Rangers penalty area. McMenamin takes over, quickly closed down, Fraser... And then Flynn once more up against Barisic, about 10 yards from the goal line. McManaman steps away from Lundstrom, almost in the right touch line. Onto the left foot, swings in, it's a good ball, and Butland able to clutch it inside his six yard box. Not sure if a younger get anything on it as it came in, but it's a dangerous ball from McManaman, and uh, Rangers surviving that particular moment of danger. 
It was brilliant play from McMenamin down on the right-hand side, looking to chop back onto his left foot, flashes it right across the front post. The younger's only inches from it. I don't think he got anything on it. And Butland there to kind of sweep up, if you like, but better from St Mirren in terms of an attacking sense. Here's Barisic, midway inside the St Mirren half, left-hand side, plays it in towards Dessers, good challenge by Gogic, and it breaks forward for a young gun. The first couple of grumbles from the Rangers supporters around about us as uh, Dessers was unable to hold on to the ball there. And he's got uh, to do better though, Al. I mean, that's two now. There was one just a few moments ago that comes up to him. And he's got Gogic behind him, he's very aggressive, but you've got to be able to hold the ball up and link the play. It's a large part of a centre-forward's game. And, uh, yeah, a couple of grumbles there. He's got to be a bit tidier in terms of possession and linking the, the play. We just saw a rerun of the, the ball in there from McMenamin. Mean, it was actually Balligan who was closest to making any contact. And actually, if it had come off Balligan as it came in there, Probably it could have ended up yeah. anywhere. Yeah, it was a great ball. It's a less good uh, ball forward uh, from St Mirren. Straight out of play from Boyd Munson. and it'll be a goal kick to Rangers, which is already taken. Butland to Balligan, and that certainly seems to be uh, Philippe Clement's preferred central defensive pairing at the moment. Balligan alongside Goldson with uh, John Suter and Ben Davies on the bench this afternoon forward it comes for Seaman chests it down on the edge of the penalty area Dessers can't get onto it though and uh, Flynn able to complete the clearance for St Mirren you'd expect Rangers to have identified the fact that they've got Ryan Flynn playing I mean, he's only started I think this is only his second league start of the season and uh, you would imagine that Seaman up against him in a foot race wouldn't be much of a contest but uh, they've not really tested him thus far no there was the one ball early on over the top Here's Lawrence advancing towards the St Mirren penalty area. Cantwell with a, a loose pass, which is mopped up by Gogic. And now it's Tanzer just outside his own penalty area. Left-hand side plays it forward. It's cut out, though, by McCausland. And Lawrence gets it back to McCausland, moving towards the penalty area. Dessers tried to take it on the turn, and he couldn't do so. It was a better attempt. And it was a decent bit of intent from uh, McCausland, certainly. But it ends up in the arms of Zach Heming, and it's still 0-0. Yeah, McCausland looks so dangerous, doesn't he? When he's running with the ball, always get his head up. He sees the pass into Dessler's feet. Again, Dessler should do better. If he is going to turn, he's got to secure it better or take a touch and try and bring somebody into play at the edge of the box. But bright from McCausland. Lundstrom on to Cantwell against slightly loose, but uh, Cantwell does manage to get the pass off to McCausland, who immediately plays it forward to Dessers. Dessers nudges it back to Cantwell once more. Midway inside the minute half, the referee rather getting in Cantwell's road, but uh, gets the pass off to Tavernier, who plays a poor pass to Lundstrom and St pick up. And now it's uh, McMenamin coming up towards the halfway line. O'Hara asks for it off him, but he plays it forward instead for Kilty, who's uh, tracked by Goldson. It's out of play for a Rangers throw-in down near their own corner flag on the left-hand side. Goldson takes it quickly into Barisic. Here's Lundstrom out to McCausland, who has looked bright again in the early exchanges here with uh, 16 and a half on the clock. No goals as yet and no test really for either goalkeeper in the opening stages. Goldson plays it uh, square to Balogun. Balogun has it back from Sima. Again, maybe not quite the urgency to Rangers play here at home that you would expect from a side looking to try and make an impact, but Barisic clips it up towards the edge of the St Mirren penalty area. Flynn goes down under a bit of contact <laughs> from Sima. Uh, it's, this, it's the age-old defender falling at their ground as soon as he feels any contact. I mean, uh, clever from Flynn, he's a very experienced player. Feels Sima behind him and just goes to ground. Not a free kick, but every single time the referee buys it. So free kick to St Mirren, who last avoided defeat and Ibrox, uh, October 2011. I'll come back to that because there's been a goal at Easter Road, will he? Yeah, goal here at Easter Road and it goes to the home side. Hibs take the lead. Quite incredible. Nick Montgomery is speaking about Aberdeen playing the long ball. Well, it was Hibs that played the long ball and Rivizic uh, caught once again. Ball watching. It goes right over his head. Boils onto it like a flash. He's got good support from Vente. He slips it to his left-hand side into the path of Vente and Vente puts it into the back of the net. We haven't kicked off yet. I don't know if they're checking it. Um, there could be there, there could be a possibility of offside, but uh, 
that the goal stands just now and we wait for VAR to make the final decision. Thanks, Willie. 1-0 Hibs then as it stands. As Rangers come forward looking to get a goal themselves. Remember, uh, Celtic winning 3-1 coming from behind up at McDermott Park against St Johnston in the midday kickoff. I get the impression that Willie wouldn't want to have uh, played centre-half with Rubicic. Barisic sends it in, back post, a good ball. Dessers down, Cantwell can't make the contact. He would have desired, it was actually Tavernier at the back post who nodded it down. And it was a really good ball in from Barisic, first and foremost. And I thought Tavernier might have gone for goal himself. Yeah, the ball in's good. Um, Tavernier nods it down to the penalty spot, but it's just too far away from Cantwell, really. He tries to kind of throw a leg at it right around the penalty spot. He can't get any purchase on it, and St Man managed to clear that Hibs goal stands incidentally it's been cleared and uh, they do lead by a goal to nil Dylan Venta with the opener there at Easter Road still nil nil with 19 minutes played at Ibrox between Rangers and St Mirren so going back to that uh, last time St Mirren avoided defeat here as I mentioned uh, October 2011 do you know who scored for St Mirren that day Stephen? I, yeah I do indeed it was a 90th minute equaliser and uh, a couple of boys in the press room were telling me it was actually quite a good goal, which just <laughs> astonishes me. After it, was a, it was an extraordinarily good team goal. We built it right from Craig Sampson, the goalkeeper, uh, right up the pitch, crossed in by David Van Zanten, and I managed to get a toe to, to poke it past Alan McGregor. Yeah, I remember it well. 1-1 one, one that afternoon. They've lost their last 12 since then. But... Uh, Competing well this afternoon so far. 20 minutes played, nil-nil as Dessers flicks it on for Tavernier. Tavernier spins on the edge of the box, away from Tanzer, right-hand side. Who can he find in the middle? Is beyond Dessers and poked away only as far as Lundstrom. A speculative effort from the edge of the box from him as he chests it down and volleys it goalwards well wide. And a shake of the head from uh, John Lundstrom, who's still waiting on his first goal this season. Rangers nil, St Mirren nil. Yeah, it wasn't an easy chance. He's 20 yards out, the ball bounces up, he takes it out the air. But Tavernier's getting quite a lot of deliveries into the box. Again, in the right-hand side, a good spin, flashes it in. Nobody was there. Seema and Des has both have gone past the ball. St Mirren only cleared it to the edge of the box. And it was a difficult opportunity for Lundstrom. Shouldn't be too harsh on himself um, on the volley. Just pulls it wide of... Zach Hemming's left-hand post. Hemming uh, taking his time over the goal kick. Philippe Clement having a word with the fourth official, Peter Stewart down there, about the length of time that's taking. Balogun sliding to try and keep the ball in play, but failing to do so. It's a throw into St Mirren just in front of Philippe Clement's technical area. He's already out at the edge of it. Uh, I think he's, he's always at the edge of it. He always is, and he's always in the fourth official's ear, I've noticed. Remonstrating just now with the referee about the, the time wasting as well, and Marcus Fraser's indulging in a, a little bit of that as well. And Clement is only a yard or two away from him, and he's also <laughs> giving him a hard time. The crowd are joining in now as Fraser steals a few yards and eventually throws it straight to Borna Barisic, who puts it high up in the air. Richard Taylor completely misjudging the flight of that, but it breaks for Boyd Munch, who gets it forward for Taylor once more, and he needs to get himself back in position, O'Hara out to the left hand side to Tanzer, on the halfway line uh, Boyd Munz back with Tanzer, just inside his own half tracked by McCausland, comes back to Gogic who's playing in the centre of that back three for St Mirren, then it's Fraser out to Flynn, tracked by Sima midway inside the Rangers half Fraser once more forward for McMenamin, McMenamin gets it back to Flynn, he's asking a lot there of a Junga who then clips Balligan as they, they both chased the ball down the right channel. Ayunga not happy that the decision has gone against them, but it didn't look like to be a foul. It was a foul. It was a foul, and it's a silly foul to give away because Balligan was facing a decision either put out for a corner or a shine. Some territorial would have been up the pitch, so a silly one to give away from Ayunga there. Here's Lundstrom driving up towards the halfway line. Rangers looking for a bit of inspiration, which has been lacking so far and was certainly lacking on Thursday night. Here's Cantwell. Out to the right-hand side for Tavernier. Midway through the first period, Tavernier clips in towards the edge of the penalty area. Might find its way through to Dessers. Flynn gets there with the first contact and then it's hooked away out on the far side by Tanza. Rangers throw in about 20 yards from the corner flag. Tavernier looking to take it quickly. It's back with Cantwell. Now with Tavernier once more and then Cantwell again. 
Back he goes into the centre circle to Balogun. Balogun out to the left-hand side for Barisic. It was uh, slightly short, but Barisic does have it moving in field. Midway inside the Sibirin half, just touches it off for Goldson now. Goldson back out to Tavernier, right-hand side. He looks to try and get it into the penalty. They're asking Sima to come and meet it. He does, and it's only a foot or so over the crossbar from the header at the back post from Abdallah Sima. Still nil-nil, though. He is good in there, Sima. Uh, Tavernier's been allowed to put in far too many crosses. This one's deep to the back post. Sima's up early, gets good contact with it, just goes about a foot over the bar, but must be five, six crosses now Tavernier's put in on the right-hand side, so we don't need to identify that. We know it's this big threat, but he's been allowed too much space to do it at this minute in time. No goals in eight for Abdallah Sima after a streak of seven and seven. Looking to end that as uh, Butland plays it out from the back to Tavernier. We'll hear a, an update from Willie Miller at Easter Road just shortly once uh, the Strangers attack finishes up one way or the other. Here's Barisic, left-hand side. Sima now with his back to goal, back to Barisic, still midway inside. The St Mirren half gets it back from Sima once more. Barisic then plays it short for Cantwell. Barisic was just not quite anticipating the return again from Cantwell and Fraser picks up for St Mirren and uh, plays it off his own player in Ryan Flynn and it breaks back the way of Cantwell. Infield it goes to Lawrence. Lawrence now midway inside the St Mirren half once more. Tavernier right-hand side. And back with Lawrence. Clips it up towards Dessers. Instead it's chested down to Dessers by Seema, but he can't keep it again. And you can hear maybe the Rangers crowd just beginning to get on the back of Cyril Dessers as they were with Cifuentes and Lammers the other night. Not Things not going their way. Let's cross the Easter Road there. It's 0-0 here. Will he still 1-0, Hibs? Uh, still 1-0, but it should have been 2-0 to the home side. Magnificent play. John Newell playing the slide rail pass to Tavares down the left-hand side. He goes in. It's not that tight an angle. I'll tell you what, Roos is beaten. Hands up as he tries to slip it into the far post. And it just agonisingly slips past that far post. It should have been the second one. Aberdeen being ripped open again right down the middle of their defence yeah, but it's still here 1-0 but it should have been 2 thanks again Willie yeah, goal is here as uh, Marcus Fraser again takes his time over a throw he's going to get booked here and the uh, arms go up in the air from Marcus Fraser to say well what do you want me to do I think ultimately well I mean I think the referee's reacting to the crowd there, to be honest with you. And, I don't, and Philippe Clement. I don't think he's given him a warning before, just flashing a yellow card. Yeah. And it wasn't like he was standing there for 20 seconds. Here come Rangers, Seema for Dessers, Taylor trying to get back. That's oh, a good challenge from Taylor. He managed to use his pace and strength to get back goal side when he'd been caught wrong side initially and uh, got it back to his keeper who was able to clear the ball out for a throw-in. But that was an opportunity for Dessers. It was, yeah, and the one thing he doesn't have uh, is pace and it was actually really good in the end from Richard Taylor to get back. Uh, had he had slightly more pace, Dessers, he may have been bearing down on goal managed to get his shot away but as it was Taylor does well to get the foot in he just needed to get his body uh, in between Taylor and the ball as much as anything else when you don't have pace you've got to use that is that what you do at the fives? that is precisely what I do it's seven aside was it seven aside? Uh, right? okay. yeah that's exactly the type of thing I do right good I need to watch that sometime yeah, I wouldn't bother although it's not much worse than uh, what we're seeing so far <laughs> here I would have to say as uh, <laughs> Barisic picks up on the halfway line back with Balogun it's uh, a game that probably needs a goal here's Goldson coming forward into this minute and a half, Lawrence out to the right hand side too much in the pass for Tavernier and yeah, it's not clicking for Rangers no, just it's at the not. moment it's not and the Smirin game plan is going well obviously they're not really doing too much uh, offensively but um, they're not allowing Rangers too many opportunities a few crosses from Tavernier but again for me Rangers are just lacking a wee bit of tempo and creativity and I felt as though they'd picked the right team for that today certainly Lawrence and Cantwell are more than capable of it Seema and McCausland but McCausland started brightly been very quiet in the last 10 minutes or so Stephen Robinson will be pleased with his team's performance so far. He sure will, yeah. They've lost their last three away from home, having uh, been unbeaten in the first 4-1-2 and drew two at the start. As, as 
what he was saying to Martin pre-match, that it's just been latterly that their away form has uh, declined. But uh, very much in this contest, 28 minutes in, Rangers nil, St Mirren nil. It's Gogic on the edge of his own penalty area, plays it square for Marcus Fraser. Fraser now out to the right-hand side for Flynn. Takes a touch and then tries to move away from Sima, who gets back and makes the challenge. And it'll be a throw-in for St Mirren. That one's quickly taken by O'Hara. Gets it back to... Fraser, now Gogic, square for Taylor, midway inside his own half. Out to the left-hand side now for Tanzer. Tanzer comes forward with McCausland coming back at him. Decent ball forward, maybe just a little bit too much on it for Kilty to be able to gather. And it comes all the way through to Butland, who immediately bowls it out for Tavernier and now Lundstrom. Right-hand side on the halfway line is Cantwell. McCausland is with him. Back in field to Lundstrom on the halfway line again, steps forward. And McCausland once more. So a little bit pedestrian from Rangers. More than a little bit out. Goldson has it inside his own half. Balligan now out to the left-hand side to Barisic. Lundstrom's available in the middle of the park, but he goes back instead to Goldson. And now Tavernier. McCausland picks up. Driving at the St Mirren defence now. Through for Sima. Dessers is in. Dessers round the keeper. He goes down. Uh, what's the decision? It's an offside flag, is the decision. Yeah, I think the Rangers fans were looking for a penalty as Dessers went through there. Uh, Zach Hemming comes out. We'll get a wee replay here to see if they get something on the ball. But if the flag was up, it wouldn't have counted anyway. It a great play, uh, play from McCausland. Drive it on defence. Flicks a wee cheeky ball through. I think it was for Sima. Sima missed it. It was Dessers in the end. Here comes the replay now. Yeah, Dessers is uh, a good metre off. Uh, and, uh, yeah, even if it had been a collision, but Hemmings, it would not have been a penalty kick anyway. Good play from McCausland, though. Brighter. Yeah, clearly offside as, uh, as Dessers went through there. And uh, half an hour in, we are still awaiting the first goal here as Hemming takes the free kick from inside his own penalty area. Balligan wins the header. Fraser tries to clip it forward, but can't find a teammate straight out of play. And uh, Barisic takes that. Philippe Clement still patrolling the edge of that technical area, demanding more from his sides. A poor pass from Goldson, Kilty, cut it out, but Lawrence picks up in the loose ball. Right hand side, clipping it forward now for Tavernier. Tavernier tries to pull it out of the air. Gogic is with him though, just giving it straight back to Tavernier. The Tavernier can't do much with it. It's out of play in the far side. St Mirren throwing. Rangers nil, St Mirren nil. Yeah, Gogic should have just cleared that in the first opportunity, allowed Tavernier to nick it back, but then Tavernier takes a heavy touch and it's a St Mirren throw in. When St Mirren are kicking the ball long from the goalkeeper, I noticed this with a younger previously, for a big guy, for a kind of six foot two, three striker, he jumps under the ball, he doesn't challenge for the ball, he doesn't do enough for me to win the header that's going to allow uh, St Mirren to pick the second ball up. Just Tavernier in field for Lawrence. Rangers nil, St Mirren nil. 1 0 to Hibs at Easter Road against Aberdeen and 3 1 Celtic against St Johnston earlier in the day. Here's Seema for Cantwell at the edge of the box. Back with Lundstrom. Shooting opportunity always rising though. And it didn't look to be the best option available to John Lundstrom. Neat play though at the edge of the box between Cantwell and Seema. A couple of one touch passes. It comes out to Lundstrom. 25 yards out, you knew he was going to hit it as soon as he took his touch, but yeah, he got it all wrong, and as you say, Alistair, as soon as it left his boot you could tell it was going to end up in the Brimland stand Goal kick taken by Heyman, 32 minutes played, no goals over Goldson and Ayunga, and Tavernier just plays it high in the air Goldson will have to keep his eye on that, flicks it on Cantwell likewise onto the halfway line, Taylor steps in but gives it straight back to Cantwell who loses his footing and O'Hara who scored an absolute blinding goal here uh, last yeah, season uh, plays it out to the right hand side Flynn has run it out of play though uh, it's uh, a Rangers throw despite Flynn's protests back with Balligan, square on the edge of his penalty area to Goldson and out to the right hand side to Tavernier McCausland now with his back to goal, plays it back the way to Lawrence hasn't really thrived in that slightly deeper midfield role 
as yet. Here's Balogun bringing it forward into the St Mirren half, out to the left-hand side to Barisic, back with Balogun. Quickly closed down by O'Hara, Rangers throw it on the halfway line. Barisic will take it all the way back to Lundstrom inside his own half, plays it square quickly to Goldson, 12 minutes left in the opening period. Tavernier forward for Lawrence and back with Tavernier, it's been more of the same from Rangers following on from Thursday night's uh, rather poor showing, here's Cantwell though out to the left hand side to Barisic, one touch and then sweeps it in, Dessers goes to attack it, Gogic wins it and then has an important touch on the edge of the box there from Boyd Munson, St Mirren can work it clear on that left hand side, forward it goes, Goldson will get there before a younger Tavernier back to Balogun, a bit more urgency about Rangers just at the moment but Lundstrom forward for Cantwell it's a terrible pass looking for Barisic and picked up by McMenamin who goes to ground under a slight nudge from Cantwell and it's a St Mirren free kick Rangers nil St Mirren nil 11 minutes left of this first period yeah that was illustrative of uh, this first half really for Rangers Cantwell getting on the ball a really poor pass gives it away and then gives the foul away I mean the Rangers supporters uh, haven't been too harsh on the team so far but the performance level is not at the standards required. St Mirren are doing well to make things difficult for Rangers, but they've got to do more to entertain the 50,000 fans that are here. Here's McCausland. It's a good challenge in the middle of the park there from Boyd Munns. St Mirren have it back. Left-hand side, it's Scott Tanzer. Taylor stepping away from Dessers, who hasn't uh, made the most of his... Starting opportunity again this afternoon. As O'Hara plays out to the right hand side to Flynn. Flynn back the way for Fraser, just hoists it up the right flank. Uh, McMenamin tries to nudge it on it, come off Balligan last, and it's a Samirin throw. Flynn was uh, looking to play it forward for a young but instead just takes his time. And uh, Marcus Fraser doesn't want to take the throw in in case he's uh, booked again for a for time wasting as he has been already Flynn instead will take this throw midway inside the Rangers half gets it back from McMenamin closed down by Seema back the way to Fraser Fraser hits it off Flynn and it breaks Cantwell's way left hand side tries to play it to Seema but he can't bring it under control and Gogic forward for O'Hara and back with Taylor closed down by Dessers oh, Dessers has dispossessed him Cantwell goes down he's looking for the free kick and Matthew McDermott's not interested and uh, St Mirren will come forward left hand side it's Tanzer comes off uh, Tavernier but Kilty forward for Tanza once more into the penalty he goes for goal oh, tries to actually to find a Junga a cross goal and a Junga wasn't all that far away from making the connection as uh, St Mirren looked dangerous on that particular counter St Mirren's best counter attack of the game it comes from a mistake initially from Richard Taylor he gets the ball taken off of him Rangers nearly break away Heming clears down the left hand side great work from Tanza and uh, eventually I thought initially it was a shot Alistair like you but it goes to the back post and a younger is just underneath him giving away the edge of the penalty is Simmer and Curler go just wide a save by Butland as uh, Boyd Munch tried to curl it into the bottom right hand corner and Butland threw himself to his right to push it behind for a corner the best chance and best effort of the game so far 100% the best effort of the game again Rangers architects are their own downfall this time it's Lundstrom giving the ball away with a square pass to Cantwell it's picked up by Boyd Munch 20 yards out he drives hits it from about 18-19 yards you think it's just going to go in the bottom corner it's actually a brilliant save in the end from Butland but it's a mid corner left hand side will be taken by Boyd Munz swings it into the six yard box goes in away back out to the left hand side with Boyd Munz low ball in uh, Lundstrom there that time to head it away McCausland picks up down at his own corner flag plays it down the right flank St Mirren managed to just to knock it out of play Fraser and Flynn back there to make sure that Dessers couldn't get on to it McCausland goes down and is fouled reckons Matthew McDermott and that will be a Rangers free kick but uh, yeah, Butland certainly required just a moment ago to keep out that low effort from Boyd Munz otherwise it was nestling in his bottom right hand corner yes yeah, without doubt the best move or not best move best chance of the game but Rangers just so slack I mean it's crept in Cantwell just a few minutes ago Lundstrom on that occasion giving the ball away and they're very lucky that St didn't capitalise on that one Caelan Boyd Munz 
with uh, just the one goal so far for St Mirren but uh, very close there to a second as Tavernier clips it forward looking for Seema he can't make anything of it but McCausland has won it back for Rangers Tavernier now midway inside the St Mirren half Lundstrom plays it square to Barisic into the feet of Lawrence just at the edge of the penalty area Cantwell now inside the box, left-hand side, tries to go through a gap, manages to squeeze through it, back with Barisic, stands up to the back post, a difficult one, Sima won it in the air but couldn't hit the target as uh, Hemming was struggling up there at the back post. And, uh, Rangers couldn't capitalise, Sima nods it wide, 38 minutes played, Rangers nil, Simira nil. Well, the ball that comes in from Barisic is a big floaty high one. You think that Hemmings just going to come and take it. He comes for it and gets it all wrong. Seema's there. Seema really probably should have hit the target. Hemmings out his goal. I mean, the ball had snow on it when it was coming down. Seema jumps highest. Hemmings very, very lucky there because he completely misjudged that. And that's a couple of headed efforts Seema has had. It's really all Rangers have had in the game. It hasn't been really anything of note for Zach Heming to actually save, whereas at the other end Butland has made one top class save to keep out from Boyd Munz just a, a few moments ago. 0-0 nil -nil though, with six minutes left in the first half, an uninspiring first half, certainly from Rangers, St Mirren doing the job they set out to do thus far in the sense that they've kept Rangers at bay and uh, threatened on a couple of rare occasions themselves. Here's Lundstrom out to Barisic, midway inside the St Mirren half, into the feet of Cantwell, about 30 yards from goal, trying to spin away from Fraser, back with Lundstrom. Balligan on the halfway line out to the left-hand side for Cantwell, into the feet of Seema. Flynn tracks him, Seema goes back to Goldson inside the centre circle, out to the right-hand side now for Tavernier, Tavernier comes away from Kilty, midway inside the St Mirren half, square for Lundstrom, out to the left for Barisic, well advanced but 15 yards from the goal line comes inside Plague allowed to continue as Rangers uh, still in possession Lawrence can't pick up on a pass from Tavernier but McCausland does is back with Lawrence, about 30 yards from goal right hand side, sends it in, Seema again with a header and uh, it was uh, Marcus Fraser in the end who got the final touch challenging Seema in there it will be a Rangers corner left hand side still 0-0 5 to play Rangers switching the ball from right to left eventually out to the right again the cross comes in it's that man Seema who seems to be getting a lot of joy with headers it's actually well defended by Marcus Fraser in the end but Barisic now with the opportunity from the corner out swinger left hand side the Croatian prepares to send it into the penalty area Rangers with just about everyone inside that 18 yard box it's Richard Taylor who gets the first contact helped on at the edge of the box as St Mirren try to get it fully clear and they're going to get a free kick for a shove just at the edge of their own penalty area and uh, that gives us a chance to cross the Easter Road to hear the latest from Willie Miller yeah Aberdeen coming back into the game uh, Al you know they've had a couple of great opportunities Graham Chinney at the heart of it pressing um, the, the, the Hibs defence the first one fell to McGrath just you know just beyond the penalty spot he should have done much better um, with a you know a player of his calibre I'm expecting him to score he didn't it was a decent save from Marshall but he wasn't tested enough and then Shinny put one in a play I think it was Sockler at the back post they looked so alike uh, Mayovsky and Sockler but Sockler should again have uh, put the ball in the back of the net but David Marshall once again parried it came up back off the post and then McGrath put it over the bar so a couple of big opportunities for Aberdeen not taken Thanks, Willie. 1-0 to Hibs then, uh, Easter Road. 0-0 between Rangers and St Mirren in the final few minutes of the first period. With, uh, Celtic currently holding a, an 11-point lead at the top of the table. Rangers have this game and another against St Johnston in hand, but uh, they need to up their performance if they're to make those games in hand count. And Sima manages to poke it forward. Gogic out of play as uh, Barisic tussles with Stephen Robinson momentarily there on the touchline thrown eventually taken by Barisic up to Dessers and back with Seema he's dispossessed though by O'Hara Simirin 
comfortably dealing with what Rangers have thrown at them thus far as Lindstrom tries to inject a bit of energy and pace into the attack Cantwell now picks up he's stumbling as he was challenged there by McMenamin he's looking for a free kick he's not getting it as Flynn clears only as far as Lawrence who flicks it back the way to Goldson and Goldson will go all Cantwell's the way back Cantwell's got to stop with the theatrics right it's, you've not been given the foul but don't stop playing and the Rangers fans clearly getting on his back there because the game's still playing and he's shouting at the referee and he does it quite a lot when he doesn't get fouls it wasn't a foul here's Lawrence picking up for Rangers bring it up to the halfway line for Cantwell back to Lawrence left hand side back in field to Lundstrom the Ibrox crowd just getting a little bit exasperated with the team's uh, substandard performance so far Tavernier can't get away from Kilty it's out for a throw in two Rangers over on the far side they'll be 20 yards from the corner flag back from McCausley to Lundstrom can they manage to make the breakthrough before the interval it's out for another throw to Rangers midway inside this a minute and a half back from Tavernier to Lundstrom halfway line is Balligan Lawrence comes short for it just inside the centre circle central area slides it forward it's a poor pass from the Welshman where he gets a break of the ball and forward he comes again up towards the edge of the penalty he slips it to the left to Barisic almost at the goal line into the middle it comes Sima again on the end of it but he couldn't direct it goalwards and uh, Heming able to come off his line collect that and then launch it forward looking for a younger Balogun wins the header out of play for a submitted throw in on the halfway line Rangers nil submitted nil yeah, every ball that comes into the box from wide area seems to fall at Seema's head. He's not managed to get anything really clear cut with him so far. It seems to be the on, only way to go, go for Rangers in this first half is cross balls and hoping that Seema got on the end of them. They've not really managed to play through St Mirren or cut St Mirren open on any occasion. Well, there were boos at half-time, there were boos at full-time against Aris Limassol. It'll be interesting to hear the reaction of the Rangers crowd to this first-half performance when the whistle goes in the next few seconds. Unless they can do something here on the attack, it's Dessers' right-hand side, tracked by Gogic, spins away, finds Cantwell inside the penalty, Cantwell onto the left foot, Sima goal! There is the breakthrough at last for Rangers! And it's Abdallah Sima with his first goal in nine breaking that duck and it was a swift counter led by Dessers on to Cantwell and Sima took over and lashed it past the goalkeeper Rangers won, submitted nil right in the stroke at half time well it's a ball down the channel that Dessers chases, he's got Gogic chasing him chasing him, he does well to kind of spin out spots are on a Cantwell who's kind of in the edge of the box Cantwell comes in the way overruns it slightly but it falls perfectly into the path of Seema and his finish is emphatic a brilliant finish from him and St Mirren will be heartbroken because they've managed to negate Rangers for 45 minutes there in this first half and then just one moment they've switched off and Rangers have punished them a 10th goal of the season 6th in the league for Seema uh, Philippe Clement much happier with that move it was the first move, move of any real fluidity from Rangers in the entire game and Dessers, Cantwell and Seema combining to deadly effect in the end as Rangers get their noses in front they might have an opportunity here although Dessers just out-muscled there by Gogic as he tried to chase the through ball and uh, we're into first half stoppage then I didn't actually notice the fourth official's board uh, go up so not entirely sure how much is going to be added on but I wouldn't imagine too much because we haven't had any major stoppages we have played a minute beyond the 45 as Fraser goes back to Heming at the edge of his own penalty there launches it long upfield Balligan rises and heads it down to Lawrence Goldson just trying to see that back to Butland which he manages to do Tavernier gets it from his goalkeeper and now it's Goldson once more into the second minute of added on time Sima the goal scorer nods it down for Dessers back with Sima 25 yards from goal he might get another opportunity here he could have turned and maybe gone for a goal himself instead he tried to play it to McCausland and he was off target with the pass to St Mirren just make sure they see this out and don't lose any further goals before the interval having played so well defensively in the opening 45 minutes to lose a goal in this stroke of half time as Stephen saying will be very annoying for Stephen Robinson as the half time whistle does go and Abdallah Sima will troop off alongside his teammates having put them in front with a terrific finish to cap a good move from Rangers just 
as the half-time whistle was about to blow and Rangers have been uh, unconvincing to be kind but uh, they do have the half-time lead at Ibrox at the interval it's Rangers 1, St Mirren nil. Football from Sports Sound Brilliant drop of the shoulder BBC Radio Scotland. There's no substitute. So it is 1 0 for Rangers at half time. Seema striking late in the first 45. They're in the third minute of three of stoppage time at Easter Road. Um, it's going to be somewhat delayed because both uh, Sockler and Miofsky are down getting treatment inside the Hibernian penalty area. They've just hit the three minutes. 1-0 for Hibernian Dylan Vente with uh, the goal in the 18th minute. Just to clear up one thing, I know there was an incident earlier on which um, Willie didn't quite manage to identify from the high up in the stand there. I've got the advantage of a replay here. It was actually, it was a great drive from Shinny, won the ball um, and crossed. It was actually Miofsky at the back post and okay. I think what happened initially was, I think his shot actually hit the post, then it hit the keeper, then it hit the post again, then he cut it back, then Sockler had a shot blocked and McGrath eventually shot over. It's uh, That sounds like the halftime whistle actually, Willie. It is, Richard. It is, yeah. yeah. It's halftime, um, yeah. So, so just, yeah, just to clear up that incident for you, but it's... Um, can one of them get a blonde, you know, get dye their hair blonde? <laughs> I know exactly. they, they look so alike, Richard. They do. They're, they're exactly both, the same shape. You know, and... one's got one before his nine, another one doesn't yeah. have a one before his nine as well. So, um, apologies you, for that. Wasn't can, just 100 percent sure. Yeah. No, I mean you can usually tell the difference because Miofsky scores, scores and Sokla yeah. doesn't. <laughs> uh, but it was Miofsky this time. Okay. Um, that apart, Willie, it's been a well, gosh, it's been an incident packed 45 minutes from what I've seen. Yeah, it's been brilliant. It's been a great uh, 45 minutes. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Both teams uh, being prepared to get the ball down to pass it. Some lovely uh, football played by both sides. I would say Hibs edging it a little bit with the slickness of their passes. And of course, they've got that goal, um, Richard. And, you know, it wasn't as if uh, Rubicic didn't get the opportunity uh, to deal with the first one that came past. So he should have been on his toes. Just a long ball initially um, through for, uh, for Boyle early on in the game. But the second one, just almost identical. It's, it's, it's David Marshall that plays it. And, you know, he sees the ball coming. It's, it's a 40, 50 yard pass. And, and he doesn't adjust himself. And uh, Boyle's in behind. And so easy to set up uh, Venti to put the ball into the back of the net. Um, it, was all, it was all Hibs at that time, Richard, I must say. And, uh, you know, Newell in particular, I think, in midfield has been outstanding. Tavares had a, a couple of opportunities. One that he slid past, past the post uh, that Newell put in. Fantastic pass from the midfielder. And really, Tavares should, in my book, have, uh, have slotted at home. It wasn't far from it. It just slipped by the, the, the back post. Tavares then had a shot blocked as well by Garterman when it looked as though it was heading uh, goal-bound uh, uh, two. And then uh, Newell putting in. Newell again putting in a, a free kick for the uh, Will Fist. He had just passed. But Aberdeen have come back. Richard as well. You, you, you know, they've had a couple of opportunities. First one falling to Jensen. Didn't make a very good job of it at the back post. But then the McGrath opportunity. Should have done much better. Graham Chinney winning the ball back. McGrath getting the opportunity just beyond the penalty spot. He hits it more or less straight to, to David Marshall. He should have picked his spot and that should have been the equaliser. And then that one at the back post. Shinny again just Hibbs getting caught, you, you know, trying to play the ball out, trying to be over elaborate. Uh, Shinny, Shinny winning the, the, the ball, getting his head up, going into the box, slipping it for Sockler and uh, no, Majofsky, I beg your pardon, slipping it for, for Majofsky. It was a bit of bagatelle at the back post. I thought initially it was a save to start with, but you know, as you said, Richard coming off the post and then Marshall uh, saving. And then McGrath having an opportunity again and putting it away over the bar so plenty of excitement here but at half time it's a home side in the lead by one goal to nil yeah Aberdeen 1 Aberdeen nil. it is Rangers 1 Simmer and nil. we'll get back to Ibrox shortly let's uh, just take a few moments to reflect on the draw yesterday it was made of course for the Euro 2024 finals in Hamburg can I hand it over to you Gianluigi and may I ask you to open it just to confirm which yeah. team is there inside would be a surprise <laughs> Germany what a surprise! It is indeed Germany, Group A. This team will play in Group A against Germany and 
and other two teams. Hungary. Hungary. So the first team drawn for Group A together with Germany is Hungary. First team drawn to uh, join Germany and Hungary in Group A. Scotland. A2 for Scotland. I will ask now our legend Brian Laudrup to help us and uh, with this draw, this spot, we will know everything uh, we and our, all the football fans around the world need to know about the Euro. Switzerland. Switzerland uh, joining Group A together with Germany, Scotland and Hungary. I mean, it's going to be some invasion, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. It's great. It's great to be involved in, and hopefully everyone can have a great time next summer. Scotland in the Euro 2024 qualifiers. Live on Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. Right, we'll hear a little bit more of Steve Clark in a moment, but just confirmation, those three fixtures, we know the dates and the kickoff times as well. June the 14th, the first game of the finals, Germany against Scotland. Scotland kicking off uh, Euro 2024, just like they did France 98, then it was against Brazil, this time, of course, against Germany with an 8 o'clock kickoff. June the 19th in Cologne, Switzerland, an 8 o'clock kickoff, and June the 23rd in Stuttgart, finishing off the group with uh, Hungary again starting eight o'clock at night. So this is the reaction of the national team head coach, Steve Clark. Steve, fair to say that's a bit of a headline-grabbing draw. What's your thoughts? First thought is it's nice to have clarity. You know who you're going to face, you know the, the opposition, and now we can start preparing. What are your thoughts about Germany, not just the, the host nation, but obviously you're going to be the opening match as well in this tournament? Yeah, it's good. Like I say, you, you, you know what you're up against. It'd be nice yeah, to open the tournament. Well, nice to be involved in that first game and hopefully we can set the tournament off with a good match. Yeah, that, that's going to be a really special occasion, isn't it, more than anything else? Well, for us, we've got to make sure it's not about the occasion, it's about the match. So it's an exciting draw. I don't think it really matters who we're going to get. It was always going to be exciting for us. Nice to be involved in the draw process and looking forward to next summer now. Yeah, and, and Hungary and Switzerland, your thoughts on those? Yeah, good, two good teams. Uh, we'll be competitive in the matches. I'm sure they'll be competitive too. Like I say, it's, it's a good group, I think, and an evenly balanced group, and look forward to it. I don't know if you've managed to, to figure out where you're going to be yet, but it's um, Munich, Cologne and Stuttgart, which is uh, quite a lot of distances you're going to be travelling. Have you thought about that and how that might affect the squad? Yeah, I've got other people that do that job for me. <laughs> I've got, we've got people around about now. We've, we've got a really good idea now where we'll be based and how we'll prepare for the tournament. Because yeah, uh, that's half the battle, isn't it? Getting that base sorted, and then you can get peace of mind and you can crack on doing your homework on, on your opponents, I guess. Yeah, the, the homework can start now. I can start watching videos of matches. Obviously, there'll be some friendly matches in, in March that we have to take care of. We'll get that organised as soon as we can. And, Look forward to next year. With those friendly matches, do, do you already know who, who you want to play or, or do, you, do you wait until that draw is out and then you can maybe try and get some opponents who maybe play similar football to some of these opponents you've got? We were waiting for the draw, but we, we've got a good idea of who will play, but obviously I can't announce it. <laughs> you'd love to, though, you'd love to. And in terms of now you've seen the group, what are the, what are the aims? Are they still the same to try and get out of it? To be competitive in every match. That's, that's always the aim. Respect your opponent and be competitive. What was going through your mind when you were in there? Obviously, nice to be part of it, wasn't it? And, and the flag and the name there going through your mind when the draw's coming out. Nothing you can do about it, but are you able to enjoy it a little bit? I was actually thinking I'm quite hungry. <laughs> Need a bit of dinner. <laughs> that was the first thought I had. Uh, as always with UEFA, they put on a good show, so it was a good show. Yeah, and Germany have embraced the draw. No doubt they'll embrace the, the, the Euros as well. How, just uh, your, your thoughts on how this country will, will handle it and what kind of tournament you think we'll, we'll be expecting? Yeah, I'm sure they'll handle the Tartan army, but they better be ready for a lot of Scotsmen coming. <laughs> On digital radio, FM, online at BBC Sports Scotland, your smart speaker, and on BBC Sounds. This is Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. There's no substitute. So, Group A, uh, Germany, Hungary, Scotland, Switzerland. We kick off the finals, Tomo. Uh, what are your thoughts on the draw? I like it. Big fan of it. Um, I think um, it, when you look at the pot one teams, probably out with maybe Spain at a push, Germany would be the team that you would have wanted to pick. Yeah. It's a game that I don't think we'll fear. It's a game that I think we're capable of winning. Clearly, they're still a very good international team with uh, you know a lot of top top players on their side. But I don't think we go into it fearing it. If we pulled France, I'd have been a wee bit afraid, having been over in Lille for the game against France. Um, but Germany, so 
straight off the bat and, and to play the opening game just yeah. adds it just adds so much gloss to it doesn't it it's just it's brilliant to open the tournament um, it's just going to make it doubly exciting the, the other two teams we are more than capable of beating mm -hmm. um, so I think you've got to be really positive about the draw and the other thing that I hadn't realised until yesterday was that you can actually qualify without being in the top two anyway if you manage yeah. to pick up a few points here and there so uh, I think overall um, it would have been difficult to kind of pick you know a better draw really I think that we've got to be really pleased with the draw and I think that the team in general that's been built by Steve Clark and their performances have reached a level now where they will be competitive no matter who they're playing against um, and they, uh, they'll go into each and every single one of those games thinking that they were capable of winning it. It'd be great to get off to a good start. I mean, if we get a result against Germany, it would just set us up so nicely um, for the rest of the, the tournament. And I, I firmly believe we'll qualify from, from that group and that group of players will be the first team that, uh, that managed to do it. And that's obviously, Willie, that is the aim. Uh, look, I'm sure Hungary and Switzerland will also be looking at this group and indeed Germany and thinking, <laughs> yeah, this is a group we can get out of. But, but that, I mean, that's quite nice in that sense because these are all realistic ambitions for all these countries it is that kind of group yeah Richard I, I think they'll all be looking at it thinking that they're going to qualify out, out of it so you know I think that tells you uh, where we are that uh, the performances have got to be of a high level uh, and you've got to remember you, you know Germany are playing at home as well so you can write them off all you want and I, I know some of their performances recently have not been up to par but at the same time you've got to uh, be able to deal with that and, and uh, you know they'll be desperate to obviously qualify out of that but it's fantastic to be the opening game isn't it I think that's something that uh, the players will be looking forward to it's something that uh, in your career um, you don't get too many opportunities to do and uh, th they've got that chance um, but Hungary did well they finished top of their group didn't they with mm -hmm. the 18 points so you, you, you know I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't write them off and, and Switzerland will be competitive as well finishing second in that group just just glad we're, we're not in there we didn't, uh, we didn't get that group of death of uh, Spain, Croatia, Italy and Albania as well Italy obviously the one that you wanted to yeah. uh, avoid and we yeah. managed to avoid uh, Italy so I don't think we can complain about the draw and uh, you know I hope Steve did get some food um, you know, after the draw, I'm sure he did. Maybe some champagne and some caviar as well, because as you said, you have to usually put on a nice spread for them. Absolutely. I think there are various things you can look at. If we if we win the group, you're probably looking at either England or Denmark in the round of 16. If you go through as runner-up, it's um, it's from the Italy, Spain, Croatia, Albania group. If you finish third, or you're one of the the four best third place teams. Uh, it would be a group winner, but it wouldn't be France. It would be from either groups B, E or F. So you might be looking at Spain. You might be looking at Belgium. You might be looking at Portugal. These are all permutations we'll have so much fun with over the next uh, six or seven months. Bottom line is we're heading to Germany next summer. And we now know, as Steve um, Clark was saying there, there is that certainty, first and foremost, Germany. And then, of course, uh, those matches uh, to follow against Switzerland and Hungary. Uh, lots to look forward to. Still plenty, of course, domestic football between now and that. then. It'll all be live with us here on Sports Sound. Second half coming up live from Ibrox, Rangers St Mirren. And will it be right across Hibernian against Aberdeen? Can Hibs uh, hold on to that advantage? Can indeed they... I mean, i got to say, they could have been 2 or 3 nil up in that game, but there were big chances for Aberdeen after that. Uh, so Hibs, with a narrow advantage, it was Dylan Venter with his sixth goal of the season and it took virtually the whole first 45 minutes but Rangers eventually made the breakthrough as Abdallah Sima got his 10th of the campaign Rangers won St Mirren nil highlights from those two and indeed from the game earlier at McDermott Park on Sports Scene tonight Dailang Jaya Simi putting St Johnston in front five minutes before half time Celtic poor in the first half much improved in the second the three goals came in the final quarter of the match. Callum McGregor, the superb strike, and then an absolutely brilliant goal from Matt O'Reilly, both in terms of its construction and its finish. Watch out for that one in sports scene. And James Forrest, rounding things off for Celtic. A sigh of relief at the end. Um, Celtic eventually winning by three goals to one. So highlights on sports scene tonight. Highlights from those two matches from yesterday as well. 
Hearts making it four wins on the bin, on the bin, on the spin. Uh, a Will Dennis own goal, his second own goal of the season, actually. Um, Hearts getting the victory there against Kamarnik and Motherwell and Dundee battling out uh, a 3 3 draw uh, for Parks. So a sports scene 7 15 tonight on the BBC Scotland channel. And do look out, listen out for plenty of live football in the week ahead. Tuesday night, Scotland against England in the Women's Nash Nations League, um, and also updates from Ross County against Motherwell in the Premiership and the four other midweek fixtures in the top flight go ahead on Wednesday Hearts against Strangers Celtic Ibernian Aberdeen Kilmarnock St Johnson against St Mirren join uh, the guys for Sports Sounds on Wednesday night for that one I'll be with you on Tuesday for the uh, Women's International and the County Motherwell game and you'll be able to watch all the midweek highlights Wednesday night 10.40 on Sports Scene so the team's uh, emerging from the dressing rooms and the two big matches. Easter Road, Hibernian 1, Aberdeen 0. Willie will keep us right up to date on that one. We'll have live second half commentary from Ibrox. Abdallah Sima has uh, separated the sides as things stand as we head back to our commentary team here on Sports Sound and BBC Radio Scotland of Stephen Thompson and Al Lamont. Thanks again, Rich. Yeah, Matthew McDermott, the match referee, just making his way into the centre circle with the match ball. Gee, throws to Caelan Boyd Munz who came really close to opening the scoring in that first half but for a terrific save by Jack Butland and then Abdallah Sima just before the interval did grab the opening goal to put Rangers in front and put a rather more positive spin on a first half in which they failed to really impress for the most part but it was a terrific goal in the end and uh, I'm sure Philippe Clement will be expecting more of his side, though, in this second half. The bad news for St Mirren is that uh, Rangers have only conceded five goals in their 10-game unbeaten run, and uh, they do have the best defensive record in the Premiership right now. So it'll be a, a tough nut to crack, if you like, for St Mirren in the second period, but uh, they have got his back underway and they have a throw out on the right hand side played forward by O'Hara but straight out of play for a, a goal kick to Rangers no changes to, to either side at the interval so still as you were which is uh, Jack Butland in goal Tavernier, Goldson, Ballion and Barisic Lundstrom, Cantwell, Lawrence McCausland, Sima and Dessers for Rangers Hemming in goal Fraser, Gogic and Taylor Flynn and Tanzer and the wing backs uh, O'Hara, Boyd Munz, Kilty, McMenamin, and Ayunga for St Mirren. Here's Tavernier for Rangers into Lawrence, just clips it forward, looking for uh, Cantwell, but it was uh, just a little bit off target. St Mirren able to work it clear, but Barisic steps in. And, uh, he's given it up to McMenamin, and now it's Flynn who's done fine on a rare start for St Mirren. Oh, and uh, there's McMenamin coming forward for St Mirren once more. Right hand side just at the angle of the penalty here. And he tries to drive it across goal, but he gets his angles wrong there and it's straight behind for a goal kick. We've played 47 minutes almost here. Rangers won St Mirren nil. Yeah, he did well to find the space for the cross, but on his right foot, it was never uh, going to trouble anybody. Right over the top of Jack Butlin's bar. Here's uh, the goal scorer Sima, left hand side, but uh, midway inside the submit and half. It's Barisic now taking over forward for Sima once more, right in the touchline on that left hand side, trying to get away from Fraser. Battling away there, the Senegal international. Lundstrom back to Goldson inside the centre circle and out to the right hand side for Tavernier. Tavernier quickly into the box Cantwell didn't really make the connection he wanted and Fraser was able to block as uh, he kind of slipped as he was shooting there it's uh, certainly a slippery surface out there and the chance was gone and St Mirren able to clear as Lindstrom picks up once more on the halfway line plays it square to Lawrence Rangers will be looking for a quick start you'd imagine in this second half to really try and create a bit of momentum after that late first half goal here's McCausland running up towards the edge of the penalty area Taylor up against him uh, Flynn manages to get a toe to the ball and that'll take it behind for a corner kick to Rangers 48 on the clock Rangers 1 St Mirren 0 he just looks so dangerous when he's on the ball does young McCausland driving at defence he's passing to the box there wasn't a great one but 
Sperm tried to scramble it clear, unfortunately, put it behind for a corner. Tavenier to take. Just one win in five for St Mirren. Probably their poorest run of the, the season after a terrific start. Tavernier's corner from the right hand side is Gogic who gets his head to it and Tanza can poke it out of the penalty area. And Cantwell just have to be careful here. He does knock it all the way back to his goalkeeper because there wasn't too many players back for Rangers there as Cantwell was going back towards his own goal under pressure from Kilty. But Rangers have it back and it's uh, Goldson looking for McCausland. He just gets a flick onto it, but it'll take it behind for a goal kick to St Mirren. I mean, you're right, Stephen, he does look at it. He's an exciting player. He always looks to, to try and make something happen, which is not something you can say about every player out there in blue. No, and uh, he brings positivity to the side. I mean, he is um, obviously young, fearless. He works incredibly hard, but when he does have the ball at his feet... He, you expect things to happen he never takes the safe option if you like he's always looking to create uh, or go one on one situations which is brilliant for the supporters Balgan's lost possession over there on the left hand side and there's a shot at goal there and Butland forced to turn around the post it was a younger from what 35 yards out it was a a speculative effort but it was going on target and Butland uh, was rather scrambling across to his right hand side there to keep it out as a minute player just putting himself back to his feet over there McMenamin on the right hand side uh, who got the pass off yeah it was some effort that from a young I mean he got the ball and turned and for not one second I thought he was going to shoot but he unleashed with his left foot and you think it's going to go by the post but Butland's kind of scrambling and eventually gets a big hand to it and puts it behind for the corner to be taken on the left hand side in swinger it's Barisic I think at the, the near post there who got his head to it and took it out for a corner over on the far side to St Mirren it's a good ball in from Flynn into a really good area Barisic probably could have left it from somebody behind him to get the header clear but he didn't know that couldn't take the risk and just flicks it by another corner for St Mirren over on the right hand side this time and it'll be Boyd Munz to deliver this one with the left foot near post ball a younger was uh, closest to it for St Mirren but Sima manages to turn it behind once more, decent little spell this for St Mirren as they look to try and force an equaliser Mark O'Hara lurking at the back post completely unmarked and it's driven in his direction he does get the header on it but he couldn't rise high enough to force it back across goal but he's completely unmarked Stephen yeah. Todd, Todd Cantwell actually pointed at him as if to say someone going to pick him up but no one did yeah I clocked it myself Alistair that he was standing at the back post with his hands in, his, in the air for the ball and the ball was actually a really good one he just gets slightly underneath it mistimed his jump but yeah Rangers for some reason or other not picking up they've got players zonal across the six shard box three picking up the three bigger ones at the edge of the box and decided not to come out of their zone and just leave O'Hara there but he's definitely a threat in these situations and probably should have been picked up yeah couldn't make anything of it though 51 and a half played then it's Rangers 1 St Mirren nailed the goal coming just before half time from Abdallah Sima still the same scoreline at Easter Road as well between Hibernian and Aberdeen Aberdeen you would have to say despite their good performances against Rangers they really need to pick up their league form sitting in 10th as it stands at the start of play this afternoon and Goldson has it for Rangers just inside his own half now it's Tavernier looks down that right flank plays up into the feet of Dessers who gets the better of Gogic and then slips it through the right hand side for Cantwell right hand side of the box up against Fraser, plays it back to Lawrence, infield for Tavernier, shooting opportunity for Tavernier, good save from Heming to push it away, diving to his right, Sima picks up and plays it back to Barisic. Tavernier is down at the edge of the box, having got that shot off as Lawrence continues and plays it back to the right-hand side for Cantwell, looking to try and get it back across goal, can't find a way through, but it breaks to McCausland, right-hand side, Lawrence is available, Cantwell picks up instead at the angle of the box tries to curl it with the left foot but it's uh, way, way over the top from Cantwell, a poor effort in the end as uh, the referee checks on James Tavernier's welfare must just have been caught just after when taking he was hitting the, the shot, shot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Smyrna player to come out to close it down it was good play down the right hand side, Cantwell then he slipped it inside Lawrence for the wee round the corner ball picked up by Tavernier 
and he hit it really, really well. It was never going to go in, I don't think, past Sack Hemming, but just as he hit it, Gogic came out to close him down. Nothing in it, just banged into him, but thankfully for Rangers, Tavernier's back up on his feet. And well, that was a, a late one from McMenamin on uh, Golson, and he then puts the ball just over our heads into the stand, and it's a yellow card for McMenamin. Let's cross the Easter Road and let's see what's happening early in the second half, uh, Willie Miller. Yeah, Aberdeen had the ball in the back of the net to Jamie McGrath on this occasion, um, but it was Shockler that went up with uh, David Marshall. In my opinion, no doubt it was a free kick. Uh, the Hibs goalkeeper came out, it was impeded. Shockler just uh, barged into him, dropped the ball. McGarry headed it, came off the post, and, and McGrath ends up uh, uh, putting it into the back of the net. But the referee, rightly so, uh, deciding that it was a free kick against the Hibs goalkeeper, so the goal doesn't stand. You'll see my inside the penalty area, can't bring it under control from Barisic's cross. Thanks, Willie, for that update. Still 1 0 Hibs. 1 0 Rangers here as uh, Seema fouls Flynn as he tried to come away from his own penalty area. And the free kick goes St Mirren's way. Uh, you certainly wouldn't feel if you're a uh, Rangers player or supporter that uh, the game is uh, done and dusty with just that one goal advantage, would you? No, you wouldn't, but Smyrna have struggled to create anything of real note. Two shots from distance that have drawn two good saves from Jack Butlin, but out with that, they've not really managed to kind of test Rangers too much. But at the other end of the pitch, I wouldn't have said Rangers have really been that creative. They're missing a spark here, here this afternoon. Golson forward for Tavernier, looks to have recovered from that knock a few moments ago, tries to play it through to McCausland, Tanzer intercepts it, claims from not only the Rangers players but also their manager that was a handball uh, by Tanzer and I think uh, the referee has ultimately agreed with them and the free kick is taken by Lawrence. Back the way it goes to Balligan, just inside his own half, he's at square to Goldson over the halfway line to Tavernier, right-hand side, into the feet of Dessers, looking to free himself of the clutches of Gogic. Lawrence picks up, does well. Lawrence across goal, and it's poked away from Dessers. Uh, the offside flag is actually going up, but it was a good bit of play from Tom Lawrence. He always, I mean, he just looks far more comfortable, a far bigger threat, clearly, Stephen, when he's in those attacking areas. Yeah, 100%, 100%. It was actually a good play initially, Tavenier into Dessers, who just straight offside, he laid off first time into the path of Lawrence, who did well, a wee Cruyff turn, drives into the box, flashes it across the face, but Dessers had just gone up fractionally early from the pass from uh, James Tavenier. Free kick then taken by Heming, flicked on by a younger left-hand side, Kilty, can't bring it under control. Lawrence gets it back to Tavernier again, there's claims for handball against Kilty, but this time it's not given. Sima just managed to keep that in on the left-hand side and then slides it forward, looking for Cantwell, but it's just ahead of him, and Gogic comes and uh, coolly turns away from Cantwell uh, before playing it to Fraser. Cantwell working hard to close him down, but it breaks back to Fraser and it's played all the way up over the halfway line and Goldson takes possession and plays it immediately to Tavernier. Infield to Lawrence, still trying to make things happen. Tavernier, back to Goldson. The one thing I wonder about Lawrence and, and Cantwell playing the same team, I kind of thought that like you were saying they would both play effectively as eights or tens, but... Lawrence is definitely sitting deeper. Do they yeah. really need two no, they don't. Lundstrom types in, in, in that? Here's Tavernier coming into the towards the penalty area. You can answer that in a second. Here's Barisic into the penalty area, or at least you can expand on your answer. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think they do. I don't think Rangers uh, at home uh, need to have two sitting midfielders. It's cl clearly what uh, Philippe Clement wants with the 4-2-3-1 system, but I definitely feel as though they should have Lawrence higher up the pitch. Certainly, Smyrna aren't causing them too many problems that they're needing two uh, sitters there. Here's Cantwell, who's just uh, drifted a little bit deeper himself to pick up possession, comes into a central area, leaves it to Lundstrom, who plays it square to Lawrence. Back once more with Lundstrom, about 15 yards inside the St Mirren half, out to the right-hand side to Tavernier, and then back in field to Lundstrom. Nothing happening ahead of him, so he goes square to Tavernier, who goes back to Goldson and then square to Balligan, just inside his own half, and then crossing the halfway line, plays it out to Barisic. Balligan once more. And again, Golson deepens and picks up possession and plays it out to the right-hand side to Tavernier, into the feet of Cantwell. 
McCausland. Rangers continuing to try and circulate the ball to move Superman around the, the pitch and eventually find the gaps as uh, Goldson looks to try and clip it over uh, McMenamin to Barisic, but McMenamin backpedaled and headed it down and St Mirren have got it back. We've played 58 minutes here and uh, Lawrence has won it back for Rangers. Slips it to Cantwell who in turn finds Dessers. Cantwell's still available, he's got to play him in surely and he goes for the shot instead and it's a comfortable save really for Hemming when Cantwell was sitting demanding the ball and uh, Dessers from a tight angle tried to go for goal instead, still 1-0. Yeah, you're spot on Alistair. He really should have cut it back to Todd Cantwell who was in acres of space. He goes for the shot from a really, really tough angle. I mean, it's not a bad effort, but it's going to make me something really special to beat the goalkeeper from there. The better option was to put the cut back to uh, Cantwell. He probably just thought, that's my chance to get a goal here. Still 1-0 then, as uh, the hour mark approaches. St Mirren have it through McMenamin, just nudges it back the way, and O'Hara plays it to Gogic. Square for Taylor back in the starting lineup this afternoon after a couple of uh, games out injured here's Kilty almost finds the pass does find its way through to Ayunga edge of the box he takes the shot on but Butlin's down to his left hand side to see but it didn't really have the power that Ayunga was looking for and it's still Rangers 1 St Mirren 0 brilliant play from Greg Kilty turns on a sixpence tries to fire it through to Ayunga it kind of ricochets off Connor Goldson's foot and falls in the path of a younger who gets turned quite smartly but you're right he never caught the shot on his left foot at all I mean it was a decent enough angle but Butlin could have thrown his cap in it good work from Barisic left hand side but a good take also from Hemming under pressure from Dessers and uh, immediately rushes to the edge of his box and plays it out to Fraser who touches it on for O'Hara crossing the halfway line looking to try and help his team get back on to level terms but no way through for St Mirren on that occasion and uh, Barisic gets it into Lundstrom who gets the ball back initial ball forward wasn't a good one this time he finds Sima who tries to clip it over the top looking for Des it's a tough ball and we're going to get the introduction and the first substitution of the game and it's going to be from Rangers and it's Danilo who's waiting to come on and uh, I would assume that uh, Cyril Dessers yeah. effort a moment or two ago when he might well have picked out Cantwell instead is going to be his last uh, meaningful act of the game Danilo didn't really offer enough on uh, Thursday night either but he wasn't alone in terms of uh, Rangers players in that regard as the ball does go out of play and it will um, allow Danilo to make his entrance uh, just as the hour mark takes away and it is Cyril Dessers to be replaced no goal this afternoon for Cyril Dessers uh, plenty of endeavour but uh, again nothing really to suggest that he deserves the starting jersey no unconvincing he was involved in uh, the goal for Rangers so you can give him that he did have a positive impact in that sense but just as in general doesn't do enough for me Danilo immediately trying to get involved and it's uh, out for a throw into Rangers on the right hand side Tavernier has to go back the way to Butland he's uh, kept six clean sheets in his last nine in the league and looking to make that seven and ten and make sure Rangers go back to within eight points of Celtic at the top of the table with a game in hand as Tavernier has it right hand side now McCausland steps away from Tanza, driving in that similar in defence. Plays it to Cantwell. Danilo Cantwell. Still Cantwell might have the chance. He just slightly lost track of the ball there. Still gets the shot away, but his block comes back to Barisic. Left hand side, it's Sima. Sima pokes it back to Cantwell, but 25 yards from goal. Stands up to the back post. Tavernier will just let that go out for a throw in off the head of Tanza. That was a big opportunity for Rangers. Maybe they just played one pass too many. Danilo too unselfish there when he might have taken the shot on. He tried to find Cantwell. Here's Lawrence back into the box, but it's a poor ball and all the way behind for a goal kick. 62 and a half on the clock. It's Rangers 1, St Mirren 0. A brilliant again from Young McCausland. Receives the ball, drives it straight at the St Mirren defence. Jinks past one, two, three players. Spots the run of Cantwell. Cantwell pops it into Danilo who tries to pop it back to Cantwell you're right Danilo probably should have taken a touch and had the shot himself but again it all comes from that young man McCausland hey, Easter Road's time and Willie Miller can uh, update us once more
Yeah, big opportunity for Aberdeen. It's been a really lively uh, game in general, but it was Majofsky that was in this time a Clarkson pass over the top. He's in, he takes it on the volley. He's so unlucky to see it uh, hit off the post, but it hits off the inside of the post. It looks as though it's going towards Sockler, who's who's uh, who's following up. But Will Fish there on the goal line manages to somehow clear it and get the danger away. Really lively game here. Still the same score line with uh, with Hibbs in the lead. Thanks again, Willie. Yeah, 63 and a half played here at Ibrox. Still Rangers won. St Mirren nil. That was a big opportunity a moment or so ago. But uh, Danilo just on the park. You would think a, a fully firing striker in uh, high in confidence would have taken the shot on, but he tried to slip it to Cantwell instead and the chance ultimately was gone. And so it's still a slender lead for Rangers as uh, Butland gets the pass back from Goldson and immediately plays it out to Tavernier who bursts forward down the right hand side looking to try and get it into the feet of Danilo but Gogic had read it and he plays it forward and uh, Boyd Munz helps it on to Kilty left hand side trying to go between Tavernier and Goldson but uh, Lawrence was on the cover as well and uh, Rangers able to play it clear McCausland picks up in a deep area and tries to bring Rangers up the park he's going to run into trouble here but eventually he's taken out of play by O'Hara play continues because Danilo's helped on for Sima and uh, out of his goal comes Zach Hemming to make sure Sima can make nothing of that and he launches it long broadly in the direction of Ayunga but uh, McCausland felt that challenge from O'Hara and uh, I think the Rangers fans were looking for a free kick but advantage was played here come Rangers again it's Cantwell trying to get turned and drive at the St Mirren back line has to stop and pivot and gets it to McCausland midway inside the St Mirren half back to Lawrence and out to the right hand side for Tavernier Tavernier sends it in but it's too close to Hemming a comfortable take before Seema can get there 65 played Rangers 1 St Mirren 0 tried the deeper cross this time Tavernier a good 40 yards out gets plenty of flip on it but far too close to Zach Hemming who came out and showed good hands to collect it St Mirren really need to kind of turn the screw here in terms of attacking they need to take more risks it's getting to that stage in the match where time's running out well, certainly with just uh, the one goal advantage you can imagine a little bit of pressure on that Rangers back line would cause a few nerves to jangle among the players and the fans and uh, Ibrox can be a nervy place at times when the team is under pressure here comes Kilty looking to try and break forward Goldson comes across and just knocks it out of play Tanzer takes a quick throw in back the way to Galen Boyd Munch is a decent game in the St Mary midfield he goes back to Taylor on the halfway line plays it square to Fraser and Fraser out to the right hand side to Flynn Flynn comes forward down the St Mary right that's a, not a bad ball just in front of a young too close to Butland in the end and he's immediately got uh, McCausland running forward once more Cantwell goes and tries to offer himself that's where the ball goes back to Lawrence just crossing the halfway line right hand side is McCausland once more back with the Tavernier Rangers you feel need a second goal and the cushion of that to give themselves that little bit of comfort Barisic down the left hand side for Sima back with Barisic on the halfway line so a rather slack ball for Ballard and he's got to be careful there because he's been closed down by a young guy who was looking far too lackadaisical there Ballard again almost as if he could get there without any effort and only just managed to get it back to his goalkeeper I think Conor Goldson having a word in his ear there I can only think that he didn't know Ayunga was closing him down I mean he was just so relaxed and kind of half paced and Ayunga's bearing down on him at full pace and it was virtually kind of the last second he managed to just poke it back to Butland when I say poke it he fouled it at Butland who did well to deal with it but yeah Midway point in the second half, Rangers coming forward, it's McCausland finding Cantwell, Cantwell's going beyond Gogic, big opportunity this, oh he couldn't find Danilo with the cutback, and I think it was uh, O'Hara getting back there, the captain, to clear the danger as Cantwell and Danilo almost combined. Great play from Cantwell, receives the ball from McCausland, nicks it past Gogic, he's trying to pick out Danilo, it's probably, he's got Seema at the back post, and if he cuts it further back he's got Lundstrom entering in the box, and Actually, St Mirren did well to read the situation and get it clear, but brighter from Cantwell. Tavernier to take the corner from the right-hand side. Still 1-0 Rangers lead, 1-0 Hibs at Easter Road. 3-1 Celtic at McDermott Park against St Johnson earlier in the day. As Tavernier sends the corner deep this time. Balligan beaten to it in the air by Ayunga. 
Helped out of the box by Fraser. Uh, McCausland onside over there on that far side. The flag has stayed down for the moment at least. McCausland over on the left just for the moment. Goes back the way to Barisic. Barisic then swings it in towards the six-yard box. Taylor and Hemming both going for it. Between them they get it clear. Tavernier chests it down for Lawrence. Midway inside the minute and a half. Lawrence into the feet of Seema. And out to the right for Cantwell. Just nudges it forward. And Lawrence has continued his run right in the goal line. Who the last touch there. It's going to be a Rangers corner, says the assistant referee. Much to Richard Taylor's dismay. And it will be another opportunity for Rangers to extend their advantage. Rangers won St Mirren nil as it stands. Rangers having all of the ball at this minute in time, but not really managing to open up St Mirren too much. Short corner played between Cantwell and Tavernier. Now it's back with Lindstrom, 25 yards from goal. Out came O'Hara to close it down. It breaks the way of Barisic as uh, St Mirren are poised to make their first change of the game. It looks like it's going to be Charles Dunn actually to come on. Uh, McCausland gets spin on the edge of the box and uh, plays it back to Barisic. Still on that left-hand side for the moment, McCausland. Out of play for a Rangers throw-in. About 15 yards from the corner flag, back to Barisic, infield for Cantwell, midway inside the St Mirren half we'll just touch it to Goldson, just on the edge of the centre circle, plays it to the left to Lawrence, Lawrence steps away from one challenge, can't get away though from O'Hara, who plays it back to Fraser who just uh, hacks it up towards the halfway line and Lundstrom will have uh, time to get turned and uh, it's actually going to be a double change with uh, Olisanya here's a chance though for Sima to make it two and he does came out of nothing and Sima all of a sudden found himself through on goal and with terrific composure he buried it low past the goalkeeper to make it Rangers 2 St Mirren 0 well, you've got to give Todd Cantwell so much credit here for the pass through to Sima Cantwell receives the ball just after the centre circle gets turned they're checking it for a possible offside but play, plays a magnificent pass through defence splitting pass through to Seema who's one on one with Zach Henning and you're right he shows tremendous composure to poke it past him into the left hand bottom corner 2-0 no way back for St Mirren now yeah just as they were about to make those changes Solisanya was coming on I was glancing down at my team sheet there I didn't even see the initial pass through from Cantwell but having seen the replay uh, you're absolutely right Stephen it's a defence splitter isn't it and uh, Danilo and uh, Sima both gave chase but Sima was the man who got on the end of it and he buried it low for his 11th goal of the season assuming it is awarded the VAR check is complete and the goal is given it's Rangers 2 St Mirren nil as Charles Dunn comes on to replace Richard Taylor and the other change is going to be Olisanya on for a Yunga, but uh, those changes might just be a minute or so too late in happening. Yeah, I think Taylor had taken a knock and a challenge when he went up for a header, and uh, Hemming clattered into him, so Dunn coming on there, like for like, and uh, Olisanya, it'd have been good, good to bring Olisanya on at 1-0, you know, he could have caused a few problems with his pace, but at 2-0, I really don't see a way back into this game for St Martin. 47,835 inside Ibrox. Uh, there's been another goal at Easter Road. Willie Miller, let's hear who it's for. Yeah, it goes to uh, the team in the green. Um, it's the second goal for uh, Hibbs. It's straightforward. It's a corner from um, the left-hand side. And it's Martin Boyle that takes it. He curls it towards the back post. The tallest man in the pitch, I would suggest. Will Fish gets up, he, he heads it, takes a little deflection off of Rubicic and ends up in the top corner. Just before that, Aberdeen had a couple of great opportunities. I'll describe them later on through Majofsky, who normally finishes them. This occasion didn't, so it's Hibs that take a, a, another step forward to the three points by making it 2-0. Thanks, Willie. 2-0 here also, but Samina with an opportunity here. Goldson uh, fouling on Lasagna, earning a yellow card for his troubles. And uh, Samina of the uh, free kick, about 30 yards from goal, just left of centre. There is an opportunity either for the direct strike on goal or indeed to just tease the ball into the box. Both Flynn and Boyd Munce are over the dead ball situation. The Rangers have a, a wall just fractionally outside the penalty area, so we're talking 28 yards here as it's sent in towards the back post by Boyd Munce, but there's too much on it and uh, well, that's as good an opportunity almost as they've had in the second half and uh, they make nothing of it, Stephen. 
Yeah, it's a poor ball in from Boyd Munns. It's a really good area. I felt as it was just in shooting distance if somebody had fancied it. Clearly they wanted to try and clip it into the box, but over hit and comes to absolutely nothing. Cantwell, who uh, played a big part in that second Rangers goal, which you would think gives them the comfort they required, and they should now be able to relax and begin to play with a bit more fluency. Enjoy the closing 17 minutes of the game as Sima plays it back to Lawrence. Infield for Lunsom. Edge of the box is Danilo. Touches it back for Lunsom once more. Now Tavernier back to Cantwell in the middle of the park. He just nudges it to Lunsom and plays it out to the left-hand side for Barisic. Midway inside the seven and a half. Back to Lunsom it goes. Lawrence is available again. Square for Tavernier, about 20 yards inside the seven and a half, out to the right-hand side to McCausland, infield to Cantwell, who, you have to say, I mean, I think we already knew this, but it just looks infinitely more influential. Yeah. Play, albeit he's drifted out to the right-hand side just now, but playing off that... 100%, position. 100%, and the goal just epitomises what he can do when he's in top form. It was a great pass, great bit of vision, he's got the capability to open defences and yeah, 100, 100% he's far better playing kind of off the front player than he is out wide Here's Lawrence inside the penalty area, right hand side of it, plays it out to McCausland who goes back the way to Tavernier, Tavernier in field again to Lindstrom, about 30 yards from goal, Cantwell just tries to slip it in for McCausland and uh, Simmer not taking any chances. Scott Tans are turning it behind for a Rangers corner on this right hand side. Rangers two, Simmer nil with just over a quarter of an hour left. It's been very comfortable for Rangers in this second half. That second goal just kind of taking any nails out of the situation. But Simmer haven't done enough to ask questions in the in the second half. That long range shot from a younger, possibly the only really chance they've hardly been in Rangers half. Yeah, it's going to be a fourth away defeat on the bounce for St Mirren unless things change drastically Goldson getting on the end of the corner but couldn't direct the header goalwards and uh, just behind for a goal kick 75 on the clock Rangers 2, St Mirren 0 it's uh, the same scoreline at Easter Road for the home side as well as Aberdeen are uh, heading for defeat once more and uh, yeah, domestically it just hasn't gone their way they've got a League Cup final of course to look forward to later this month against Rangers and, you uh, wonder how much pressure Barry Robson would be under if they hadn't had that uh, final place given their league position yeah well certainly 10th place is uh, not remotely good enough for Aberdeen as uh, Danilo chases a ball through the middle as uh, Heming comes out to gather before he can get there. There's a penalty to Aberdeen, though, at Easter Road, Willie Miller. Yes, there is. Uh, um, Stevenson it was. It came off the arm of Stevenson. There was a little kind of a dink ball played through just on the edge of the box. The referee um, has pointed to the spot right away, so it's definitely hit the hand that was out beyond his body. Um, Louis Stevenson and uh, Majofsky's get the opportunity to get one back here. Uh, for the Dons just setting up the penalty uh, as I speak uh, with the left foot he's just taken he steps back normally deadly from the spot he drives it's a save it's David Marshall makes the save Majofsky puts it to his right hand side David Marshall guesses right it's slow it's along the ground it's a relatively easy one if you've guessed the right way and the, refer uh, the, the goalkeeper did that he's got good fists on it he's punched it out for the throw and so Majofsky normally deadly missed two opportunities before uh, Hibbs got their second and now missed a penalty Thanks, Willie. David Marshall's got previous for that, hasn't he? As uh, Danilo is denied here at Ibrox, he had a chance maybe to slip Seema in for the hat. He went for goal himself, and it was a decent save from Zach Kemmer, a decent hit from Danilo, but uh, no goal for the Brazilian. And it remains uh, Rangers 2, Sumira 0, as the buddies prepare to make substitutions 3, 4 and 5. And uh, it's going to be Bacchus coming on as well as Lewis Jameson uh, and also Alex Grieve coming on as uh, Kilty, McMenamin and Boyd Munce all troop off into the dugout and uh, well, the final throws of the dice for Stephen Robinson as he looks to somehow salvage this but that was a big chance for Aberdeen to salvage something or at least uh, begin to make amends at Easter Road and they've passed it up as uh, Olesanya comes back from a glaringly offside position 
and uh, the whistle goes and it will be a free kick to Rangers just at the edge of their own penalty area we've played 78 minutes here at Ibrox and uh, unless uh, something pretty incredible it happens in the closing 12 minutes Stephen then Rangers look like they're heading for victory yeah it's ended up a comfortable afternoon for Rangers certainly they scored the goal at the absolutely perfect time at the end of the first half when in the first half their performance had not been great uh, in terms of looking like an attacking force none had been frustrating them um, but they got that goal and in the second half they have been the better team by a stretch and played some better football without being totally dazzling uh, but the second goal pretty much uh, confirms the, the victory for them because St Mirren haven't asked enough questions St Mirren trying to come forward right now but Lawrence picks up possession for Rangers and then just plays it out to the right hand side a nice ball for Tavernier who brings it over the halfway line on the right into Lundstrom Tavernier once more but 10 yards inside the St Mirren half Cantwell for Lundstrom then forward by McCausland in steps Gogic before Danilo can latch on to it Bacchus plays it back to O'Hara O'Hara's loose for the pass and Lundstrom steps in now Cantwell nudges it back to Tavernier into the feet of Danilo that's a loose bit of control from Danilo but uh, both he and Sima combine to close Flynn down and uh, St Mirren are further defending to do it's just knocked out of play as uh, Matondo and Yilmaz are about to come on for Rangers the lesser spotted Ridvan Yilmaz coming on for the closing 10 minutes as well as uh, the Welsh winger Ravi Matondo and it will be McCausland getting a, a rest for the final 10 minutes uh, he's been probably pretty much as good as anyone again for yeah Rangers I would say team. so yeah I had uh, another good performance looked threatening looked creative driving at people and he could be really pleased with his afternoon's work uh, Matondo coming on now the imagine for Barisic yeah Barisic is off um, and Yumaz will go into his spot and Matondo out in this right wing spot Matondo's a player who hit a bit of form early on in the season he was looking really dangerous obviously he'd been out with an injury he's coming back from that now but he's a good player to, blink, to bring on because of his pace and his unpredictability Yumaz straight into the action with this throw in over on the far side as uh, Cantwell then plays it all the way back to the halfway line to Goldson. Goldson sweeps out to Matondo, who's just playing in that right wing position in place of McCausland, with Sima staying over on the left. Tavernier uh, picks up from the Matondo throw in, but uh, Heming almost <laughs> he collected it initially and then seemed to drop it as Matondo bore down upon him, and uh, eventually the keeper manages to hold on to it. 10 minutes left in the game and uh, Rangers comfortably heading towards victory at Ibrox and uh, narrowing the gap slightly on Celtic at the top of the table still plenty of work for Rangers to do if they're to mount a serious title challenge and uh, you would imagine that the performances really have to pick up as well as uh, Tanzer's taken it to play there clumsily by Matondo it'll be a submission free kick just 10 yards inside their own half 81 on the clock Rangers 2 submission nil yeah, but I agree with you. I think that Rangers' performance this afternoon has been enough to win the game. Um, but ultimately, over the course of the season, they're going to have to improve their performance levels, certainly in terms of uh, creativity and attacking and tempo. The first half wasn't good enough. Second half's been slightly better. But if they continue to repeat that first half performance uh, throughout the season, then they might end up dropping points. Yeah, as they have done to their cost already. Hence the deficit on the league leaders who probably would admit they haven't hit top form themselves at many stages of this season. It sounded like they were certainly better in the second half. Yeah, I watched the first half. They were really, really disappointing. Obviously, Brendan Rodgers has given them a rocket at half time, and the second half was much improved. Mikey Johnson coming on and making a big impact. Yeah, he came on against Lazio and uh, made a, a difference as well, albeit they didn't help them scoreline wise, but uh, it's definitely sounding like he made an impact this afternoon. Here's Matondo trying to do likewise for Rangers, clips it forward, looking for Tavernier, but back went Alex Grieve to cut that one out, and Bacchus, who at one stage was being linked with Rangers um, and is out of contract at the end of the season, he picks up, uh, down goes Olisanya, and it'll be a free kick 
to St Mirren, just about 10 yards inside their own half. Still uh, Rangers 2, St Mirren 0. Yeah, it was Connor Goldson who's obviously been booked for that challenge on Olisana earlier. It was the same two again this time. It's never a booking, but he'll just need to watch. It's another foul. The ball uh, just trickling out for a Rangers throw in midway inside their own half. Lindstrom gets it from Tavernier and then plays it out to Yilmaz. So be keen, you would imagine, to make the most of any minutes he gets on the park and he finds Danilo with the forward ball Danilo looks in turn to play it to Cantwell but it's cut out by St Mirren and Charles Dunn can bring it forward we're going to see Sam Lammers who will continue to have played every single game this season and when he comes on late this afternoon Tavernier plays it back to Balogun I wonder if uh, Tom Lawrence will just get a little breather uh, perhaps and uh, Dujon Sterling also about to come on as Sima tries to collect the ball played down the left channel Fraser is with him Sima's done well to get a hold of the possession just inside the penalty area uh, Flynn back helping out and uh, he's managed to rob the winger of possession and St Mirren will come forward through O'Hara right hand side up towards Olisanya steps away from Balligan but Balligan goes back and uh, wins the ball and it's a real tussle there and it ends up with a Rangers free kick being awarded midway inside their own half and uh, well this game's really rather petering out since uh, that second say goal that, Alistair, yeah well, there's not been a lot happening in the last 15-20 minutes so the substitution being made now it's actually Cantwell who is uh, being brought off but it, the reaction is rather different to what it was on Thursday night the applause ring around the stadium and his assist for Seymour's second goal is well worth a watch on uh, sports scene tonight among uh, other things and uh, Tavernier is the other Rangers player who's getting a rare rest yeah, to well, I mean if you're going to give him a rest don't wait to 85 minutes he's not really giving him a rest he's still played the whole match virtually anyway Sterling comes on for him yeah, Dijon Sterling comes on for his ninth appearance in a Rangers jersey another of the summer signings who's uh, I think it's fair to say yet to make much of an impact Lammers tries to help the ball on to Danilo it's going to break back the way of Lammers and then that's a clear body check there from Tanza and uh, a yellow card flashed by Matthew McDermott as the uh, Rangers try to take the free kick quickly and uh, Scott Tanza only had one thing in his mind there we could see it from a position it wasn't here. very subtle was it let's be honest <laughs> he's barging into Lammers off the ball the referee spots it straight away he's right on it clear yellow card for Tanza Rangers free kick then, just about 10 yards inside the St Mirren half, looking to just make the victory that little bit more polished with a, a late goal, four minutes left of the 90, Rangers 2, St Mirren 0, Hibs 2, Aberdeen 0 at Easter Road, seems like that one is going to go the way of Nick Montgomery's men as Rangers come forward down the right hand side, Tanzer heads it out of play though, before Matondo can latch on to it. Rangers take the throw and into Lawrence Lundstrom forward for Lammers now Matondo running it Tanza comes to Sterling right hand side a bit much on the cross but Simo will go and make the most of it left hand side plays it back to Yilmaz Yilmaz into Lundstrom midway inside the centre and half back in field he goes to Lawrence who's done okay in that uh, deeper midfield role but I think we both agree that he'd be He's always more effective when he's in the, the final third for uh, Rangers. Submarin have got the ball back and it's Bacchus. He's uh, brought to the ground by Lawrence. No free kick as Alex Grieve gets it out to Tanzer. Left-hand side, still well inside his own half. Grieve comes and offers himself once more and then plays it forward out to the right-hand side to Lewis Jameson. Not a great first touch from Jameson. Does keep it in with his second but presents it to Yilmaz on the touchline who's able to play it forward for Sima. Two and a half minutes to play of the 90-plus stoppage time as Tanzer gets there ahead of Matondo and it's out for a Rangers throw-in. Sterling comes forward to take as uh, Rangers will keep St Mirren in fourth spot Hearts going up to third yesterday with their victory at Rugby Park and that's where 
they'll stay with St Mirren failing to take anything from this game Butland closed down there by Jameson and uh, knocks it out of play for a St Mirren throw in more or less on the halfway line how pleased or otherwise you think uh, Philippe Clement will be overall with the performance Stephen? Well he said in his pre-match interview first and foremost they wanted the victory he's got that, it's an important three points I think in flashes in the second half the performance level has improved there's been a couple of decent things happen to one of me half sniff for St Mirren here all the Sanya inside the penalty area into the side netting only though yeah. Goldson was uh, too tight to him for any realistic shot to trouble Jack Butland but ultimately Alistair I think the um, performances have to improve I mean they've done enough to get the job done which is fine you know it's three points but it's certainly not been overly impressive uh, from a Rangers point of view yeah, a big run of games coming up. Hearts at Tynecastle on Wednesday is going to be a, a tough test, you would imagine. There, uh, four wins on the yeah. spin for Stephen Naismith's side. Their best run, certainly this season. The first time they've done that in uh, five years, which yeah. is quite incredible in the top flight. As Lammers chases one down, the Nilo trying to make the most of it at the edge of the box, slips it through for Lammers. Lammers with a chance, just wide a goal. The snapshot on the spin from Lammers, and uh, he can't find the target, and it does remain Rangers 2, St Mirren 0. Danilo did well, a bit of a mix up uh, from the St Mirren defenders, not exactly great defending. Danilo manages to pick up the scraps from St Mirren's slackness, pops it through to Lammers, it's a really tight angle. It probably should hit the target, but drags it past the right-hand post of uh, Zach Henning. I think he actually had more time than he realised. He'd yeah, rather maybe. rushed the shot in the end, which is probably uh, partly down to his general lack of confidence. He could have found Sima as well inside him. He's still on that hat trick. Uh, just going back to Rangers' next games, it's Hearts away, Dundee at home here next uh, Saturday, then Betis away before the League Cup final against Aberdeen. St Mirren, for their part, uh, are away at St Johnston on Wednesday as they look to end the, what will be a run of four consecutive away defeats by picking up a victory at McDermott against Craig Levine's side, who did well in the first half, certainly against Celtic but couldn't hold out for the victory. Three minutes added on at the end of this game and we are into injury time right now. As St Mirren come forward down the right-hand side, Yilmaz though steps in and plays uh, the ball forward to Lundstrom and now it's Lammers in the halfway line. Yilmaz once more, left-hand side, looking forward, looking for options. Gogic steps in though to intercept and finds Grieve. Grieve midway inside his own half, closed down by Matondo, out to the left-hand side to Tanza Tanza comes back in field to the Kiwi Grieve he's dispossessed by Lawrence through for Danilo Gogic does well to get back at him Danilo just couldn't take it in his stride and uh, Philippe Clement turns away and something approaching disgust maybe that's a bit strong but uh, Olesanya can't keep the ball in play on this near side it's going to be a throw into Rangers into injury time it's Rangers 2 St Mirren 0 and uh, realistically this game's been done and dusted since that Rangers second goal went in well, it has been Alistair it's been a non-event for the last 20 minutes but um, so I don't know just be counting the cost of conceding right in the stroke at half time when they'd actually done really well in that first half and it's always such a poor time to lose a goal and then when Rangers get their second it's, it's just pretty much game over St Mirren looked organised, they've worked incredibly hard, but again, just lacking, for me, penetration. It's difficult here, you don't get very many ch chances when you come to Ibrox as an away side and the struggle to create. It becomes a very big game for them actually now on Wednesday. They've got to try and find a wee bit of form again. It's now two wins and nine after today. Don't want to see themselves tumbling down the league after such an incredible start to the season. It's a Rangers corner, left-hand side. Yilmaz swings it out the way. Headed clear to the edge of the penalty. Lammers couldn't bring it under control. And St Mirren will try and come forward. Sterling, though, steps in and just pokes it back down that left wing for Rangers. Seema looking to put the pressure on down near the corner fly. But Flynn, who's done OK, actually, uh, yeah, this he afternoon. Has. He has. You wouldn't say... You wouldn't particularly mark any St Mirren players no, none of them have had a particularly poor game but just collectively they haven't quite been good enough to get anything from the game no that's often the case when you play against one of the old firm um, yeah I mean it's not been a bad performance by St Mirren 
They're under a bit of pressure here. Dunn gets it back to Tanzer on the edge of his own penalty area. We're into the final minute of the three added on at the end here as Olesanya has his uh, back to goal and he's trying to get away from Goldson. He's claiming he was being held there. But uh, it matters not because Matthew McDermott brings the game to a close. A comfortable victory in the end for Rangers. Abdallah Sima goes down and kisses the turf, having grabbed his 10th and 11th goals of the season, which ultimately earned Rangers the victory. It was an unconvincing performance at best in the first half, but Sima's goal and the stroke of half-time was crucial, you feel, in uh, easing the nerves, easing the pressure on Rangers. Second half, they were certainly a bit better, and Seema's second goal after a terrific, uh, decisive pass from Todd Cantwell through the heart of the St Mirren defence, and a cool finish from Seema uh, further eased those nerves, and uh, ultimately Rangers saw it out pretty comfortably. Butlin with a couple of decent saves throughout the game to deny Boyd Munts and a Yunga, but uh, nothing overly troubling for the Rangers keeper uh, to be bothered about. And so Rangers do narrow the gap once more to eight points at the top of the table with a game in hand, but they will have to improve further if they are to seriously uh, dent Celtic's title charge. It has finished at Ibrox, though. Rangers 2, St Mirren 0. On digital radio. FM.